Store manager screwed me for the last time. Cast. Me, store manager, SM, HR lady, HL. So I worked for Target for too long. And by the time I quit, I had put up with enormous amounts of BS from customers and the upper staff. My work schedule was chaotic. And after repeated complaints to HR and the SM, I started getting nights. Unfortunately, when you're closing and working the back room, no one tells you any updates happening in the store. I don't like dealing with customers too often, so I chose to work in the stock room or receiving to lessen that chance. So when suddenly I was scheduled to work on the sales floor and work customer service desk, I was confused and really annoyed. I spoke to my department manager and SM, only to find out that my job was dissolved and no longer a role. So I quit. I gave my two weeks notice. HR walked me through it and they said they'll call to cash me out and I'll be done. As I said before, the scheduling there was awful. So I received my call from HR and went to pick up my final check on Friday. The store schedule had me down to work Friday and Saturday after the call cash out. When I go to pick up my check, the SM yells at me for not being in uniform for my shift. I told them, I'm only here for my check. He disregards that and claims I was paid for Friday and Saturday shift, so I'm obligated to work it. Me, being a fool, apologizes and put on my vest, then work that Friday shift. At the end of the night, SM writes me up and wants me in tomorrow on time. So now it's Saturday. I show up in uniform and HL looks confused and asks me why I'm there. I tell her what happened the night before. She says, no, we already wrote the check. You just had to pick it up. SM can't write someone up who isn't working here anymore. So HL takes me to customer service desk to give me cash for the last shift and SM is there. He begins by listing off all the things he wants me to do. I reply, no, don't work here, wasn't supposed to work last night either. This is confirmed by HL, so his response is, well, you're already here and in uniform, and the online orders are really backed up, so do me a favor. I said, sure thing, took my cash from HL and walked out. The last bit almost sounds like malicious compliance, because it is technically you doing him a favor by just leaving instead of sticking around and completely blowing up on the guy. Lady smashes glass door because I won't let her inside business I don't work at. My best friend and roommate works for a small independent print shop as a graphic designer. We live in the burbs and the shop is located downtown, about half an hour from our house. Oftentimes I will be downstairs for an appointment of some kind and will ride home with her rather than take the train. Usually by 4 p.m., the only people left in the shop are her and a specific coworker. So I'll just hang out in the front area of the shop with my laptop. At 5 p.m., they lock the door, and then both of them gather their things up over the next 15 to 20 minutes before actually leaving. They are often out of sight, packing up in the back. Last Friday was one such day. At around 5:10, a lady comes up to the door of the shop, a glass door. She saw me sitting there and started tapping on the door. I looked up and mouthed, the shop is closed. She yelled back, I have a question. I pointed to my wrist and said loudly, I'm sorry, the shop closes at 5 and I don't work here. She grabbed the handle on the door and started shaking it as if she could magically make the door open and then started pounding on the door again. I sat down my laptop and walked over to the door. She screamed, I only have one question. Can you let me in so I can talk with you? At this point, screaming was really not necessary as we were only separated by a glass door. I said, ma'am, I don't work here and the door is locked from the inside by a key I don't have. I can't let you in. She screamed. Why are you being such an asshole? I know you're close, but it's one question. Then to emphasize her point, she slammed her open paw on the glass door, which absolutely shattered. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. It's not like it cracked and spiderwebbed out. 
It just went to shards and fell to the ground. Fortunately, I had stepped back. The lady blinked in shock and then started to speed walk away. Fortunately, we were in a massive metropolitan city and I was able to follow her half a block before I saw a police officer standing on the street. The officer walked us both back to the shop with the woman ranting about how it wasn't her fault and if I just let her in, blah, blah, blah. She called for backup and two more officers arrived. By this time, my friend and her coworker had come up front. They took another officer back to look at the security footage, which is digitally captured. And that was pretty much that. Lady got arrested on the spot and I had to give a statement. And I'm told I'll probably have to testify in court on behalf of the shop owner to get a civil penalty added onto criminal charges and help them avoid small claims, which I'll gladly do. I'm really, really glad this story didn't end with she shattered it and ran off. I'm so grateful that they actually tracked her down and made sure she got the justice she deserved. Overbearing Karen thinks I work in a doctor's office and tries to get me to violate HIPAA, then threatens to have me fired when I don't. So as part of my job, my company sends me to different clinics to audit their invoices to ensure insurance companies aren't getting scammed for unnecessary or unperformed patient procedures. It happens more than you know. Normally, when I'm at a clinic, they'll stick me in an unused office or a cubicle so I'm out of sight and don't interfere with their normal operations. However, yesterday during a clinic visit, they didn't have anywhere to put me except the front desk with the receptionist. This wasn't a problem for me since it doesn't happen on occasions and I'm just there to get the job done and head out. So I'm sitting there in the front office desk looking over the clinic documents when the receptionist gets called back to assist with a patient. After a few minutes, I hear someone coughing slightly to the right of me and look up. I'll call her Karen because she had the haircut and the attitude. Karen, in a rude voice, I've been standing here for the past couple of minutes and you've yet to acknowledge me. You should be ashamed of yourself. Is this how this clinic is run? Me. I'm sorry ma'am, the receptionist just stepped out for a moment. She'll be back soon. I can't help you as I don't work here. She looks me up and down like she's judging how I'm dressed. I should mention that I'm dressed in standard business attire. Blazer, shirt, tie, and black slacks with my company logo and name tag hanging from a lanyard. Karen, how stupid do you think I am? You're sitting at the front desk of a clinic dressed like that and you don't work here? I should file a complaint against you with your boss. Me, listen ma'am, I've already told you I don't work here. Take it or leave it, but I work for company name and hold up my badge. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to my work and ignore her. Karen, now infuriated, how dare you? Do you know who I am? My husband works with the owner of this clinic and he'll be hearing about your poor customer service skills. Me, still looking at documents. Good for him. I repeat, I don't work here. Wait for the receptionist. Karen tries to change tactics and fake smiles at me. Look, I'm sure you're busy, so I won't take much of your time. All I need to know is my daughter-in-law's next OB appointment. Her name is Name. It shouldn't take too long for you to find her in your calendar. I just need to know what time it is so I can be here to meet her. Me, now looking at her. Are you deaf? I've already told you I don't work here. And even if I did, you're asking me to violate HIPAA laws. Do you know how serious that is? You need to ask her directly if she's actually willing to have you with her, though I doubt it. Karen, you don't know what you're talking about. That bitch should have told me when she was scheduling her first ultrasound. That's my grandchild in there, and I need to be here to see him. Now tell me when her appointment is, otherwise I'll have you fired. Me. You need help, lady. You need to leave before I have someone call security. Karen. Are you threatening me? The doctor and receptionist hear the loud commotion and come out to the front desk. Doctor. W what's going on here? Me. This woman doesn't understand that I don't work for you, and she's trying to find out her in-law's appointment. 
Karen, now panicking, your receptionist, pointing at me, has been useless and won't give me the information I asked for. He needs to be fired. Receptionist, to Karen, he doesn't work here. Doctor, I'll take care of this. And she intercoms the security office. Hi, we need a guard to come to office 123 to escort someone out. She's disturbing one of our vendors and says, thank you. Once they confirm, someone will be here shortly. Once Karen realizes she's about to be escorted out, I'm not leaving. I have a right to know how my grandson is doing. I have a right. She starts shouting profanities at us for a couple of minutes when a burly security officer arrives and tells her to leave. Otherwise, he'll call the police on her for trespassing. She refuses, so he grabs her by the arm and drags her screaming out of the office. That was the last I saw of her. But the receptionist called the daughter-in-law to inform her what just happened. After the call, the receptionist laughs and tells me that the in-law didn't want the woman anywhere near her and her baby to be. It seems her and her husband are no contact, which explains part of the craziness. I think anyone reading this would definitely agree that this is obviously the best way to get back in your in-law's life. Now nah, forget trying to be reasonable, contacting them, being friendly to them. No, no, full stalker mode and call their doctor. That's the ticket. Alrighty guys, it's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, like usual, consider subscribing if you're new around here. And if you really, really liked it, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up and a share. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.